default, uh, the last court that I fought on back in February, um, and before I went to the back, I got to watch his fight uh, in person, so that was, you know, kind of good, considering that I'm fighting him now. Um, as far as research, uh, yeah, I mean, I know some things about his background. Um, I haven't really changed anything in terms of training. Um, he's still kind of new into the game, mm. uh, so he doesn't really have any big things to change my whole game for. Uh, not to say he doesn't have good things that he does, he certainly does, but nothing that I necessarily need to change how I'm training for. He's, he's a very good athlete, and uh, you know, I'm excited to fight him. I got you. So what, So you saw him live. What did you um, get away from from him as a fighter, watching him live? Uh, the first thing I took away is he's, he's definitely a great athlete. Um, to me personally, you can tell that, you know, he, I don't think he's been doing this very long. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's still kind of learning and getting used to, you know, fighting in there. Um, but he, he's a great prospect. Um, I mean, the main thing that I took away was I, I knew before my last fight that I wanted to move down the middleweight, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, I liked, I liked the way he performed, and I thought in my head that would actually be a good fight. So <laughs> I actually asked for that one. Uh, oh. I asked for this matchup match very specifically. Uh, it just happened to work out that way. Interesting, interesting. So, so you actually, so I, I'm curious. So you said that you knew you were going to move to middleweight before your previous fight. Explain, why, why the move, why did you, why were you planning to move to middleweight uh, before the previous fight with Torres Finney? Um, you know, just through training and uh, definitely improved my cardio training. My natural weight just dropped a lot uh, as opposed to walking around as heavy as I was. I was walking around somewhere between 210 and 215. Uh, so I was basically cutting no weight to go down the light heavyweight anymore. And I was like, I think I'm just a bit too light for this. And I also just felt like, you know, I was too slow comparatively. Like when I go back and watch my first fight at middleweight and then my last few at light heavyweight, I could see like a vast difference in just the speed of my strikes and my movement. And I think I'm just a better fighter overall at middleweight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's get into the fight with Torres Finney. What were your thoughts? Because I interviewed you both, um, and both of you guys spoke um, very confidently about your abilities, and I believe both of you guys are great fighters. So go into your mentality. Um, talk about your mentality before the fight, and then when the fight actually happens, when you and Torres went at it. You know, before the fight, I knew, again, that you know, Torres was a great athlete. Play, I think he played college football. He's a multi-time state champion wrestler. Uh, so I, I knew what I was getting into, and I felt very confidently that, you know, I could keep the fight on the feet because that, you know, that's just how I fight. And I thought, again, very confidently that I would get the finish there. Uh, once the fight started, I opened up with a couple leg kicks. I felt pretty good. And the next time I threw a strike, I got taken down. Mm. And we spent, I think, the rest of the round uh, on the ground, mostly stuck in full guard, um, which I didn't feel bad about. You know, he didn't really advance position, so I felt comfortable there. And I, you know, my stamina still felt good. And the second round happened. Uh, and again, as soon as I started the strike, I got taken down. Mm. And that, that was pretty much the theme of the fight: was if we got back to the feet and I went to strike, he, I was getting taken down. And the way he was timing it was just great on his part, and uh, I believe that was part of their game plan, which just shows, you know, how good their coaching must be um, to have come up with such a good game plan. Um, so, I mean, other than that, it's really just, you know, credit to Torres. He's a great fighter, definitely a great wrestler, and he was a better man that night. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, I, w- I want to talk about wrestling for a second, because, you know, a lot of people don't like... Um, wrestlers because they you know some the fans some fans don't like it because it's boring or whatnot but my position is um, is if you're fighting a wrestler you have to work on your takedown defense if you cannot stop a take the down defense then you lose what are your thoughts on on wrestling in the mixed martial arts community when it comes to the fans and you know when it comes to the showmanship of the sport as well as the importance of takedown defense I mean, especially now, you know, everybody's getting so well-rounded. 
um, that you've got to have great takedown defense. No matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you do. Great takedown defense is, you know, one of the most underrated qualities a fighter can have. It's something you you just got to work on and get the best you can at. As far as wrestling, you know, I, I, I get where people are coming from. You know, a lot of, especially with their casual MMA audience, is looking to see knockouts. Like, they want to see people on the feet throwing hands, mm-hmm. changing leather, head kick knockouts, you know, flying knees. That's what they're looking for. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's always the smartest strategy to win. And Absolutely. again, wrestling is power because if you can threaten with the takedown, then that opens up the striking even more. Uh, I think that's why Usman's striking has gotten so good is because people are nervous about his ground. Uh, actually, Masvidal admitted that when he got knocked out, he thought that Usman was shooting. Mm-hmm. So that, that right there just shows you if you can threaten with a takedown like that, it opens up your striking game. And as far as, like, you know, the people that they call, you know, lay prey wrestlers, I get it. You know, people don't want to just watch uh, two fighters grapple the whole time. Uh, in terms of, again, like the casual audience. The hardcores, they understand how hard it is. Um, but at the end of the day, for, from a fighter's perspective, most of them are looking just like they're for the, they're for the win. They're not you know, necessarily worried about you know what the fans love to see. They might say they are, but at the end of the day, you got to get the win. Mm-hmm. And you, know, you can worry about the fan stuff later. But it's kind of just what it is with that. I mean, absolutely. I think what when I think about this, we were kind of discussing it before we were on air. Um, I work with uh, Daniel Edward. Uh, shout out to Trifecta Fight Club, and they have these Trifecta Fight Night events. And the first event that I that I went to, I noticed that a lot of the the young up and coming boxers, the amateurs, like this was like their very first um, or second live sparring sessions. They were just going full force at it. Now, granted, a lot of people like to see that. But whether whether it's boxing, whether it's mixed martial arts, the key to the fight game isn't just how many punches you you throw. It's about the effectiveness of those punches. So I want you to speak on the progression of an athlete and and just for, let the fans know how the game actually works when it comes to um, the uh, the the concept of the game, the structure of the game. I mean, if you just to look at things in terms of just strike, let's just talk striking. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, people think it's, you know, basic, you know, you throw a jab, you throw a cross, you throw a jab, hook, cross, whatever the combo may be, but the further you get into it, you learn it's just so much deeper than that. Once you learn about, you know, how you, how you use feints to set up punches and, you know, using your positioning to set up counters and traps for what the other person is doing. And same thing like I was talking about with wrestling, if you can use, uh, like a feint an overhand right and then drop into a takedown is going to make it just that much more effective. The more that you can make somebody think, it makes them more vulnerable to what you're doing. Mm. I like that. I like that. But you know what's interesting? We, um, when, it, when, you, when we're talking about thinking, um, and also I want to talk about comfortability. Because when, we, when I was watching that Jorge Masvidal fight, and we were actually talking about how like you even felt a little comfortable um, with Torres Finney on the ground. When you watch that Jorge Masvidal versus Usman fight, you see him kind of smiling. His hands are down during some parts of that fight. Like, talk about the comfortability of the sport and the thin line that fighters have to use when it comes to either going all, all out or being laxed in a fight. Oh, well, as, as far as, you know, Masvidal goes, you know, he had come out and said before that he didn't think Usman had any power. Mm. Big well, mistake. Yeah, definitely a big mistake. And the, the truth is, as good as you know, as good as the knockout was, it, it really wasn't even about Usman's power. That that was just a perfectly thrown punch. Mm-hmm. And having the thinking that somebody doesn't have power is what leads into that. Like just because you think someone doesn't, you know, have you know all inspiring power doesn't mean they can't knock you out. Anybody can get knocked out. Literally anybody. Especially if you serve your chin on a silver platter for them, which is exactly what we did. And as far as you know, we, we were talking about my fight with Torres. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to Torres. You know, I feel I feel like yeah, definitely shout out to Torres. He's a cool guy. Um, but uh, so with my fight, you know, we were you know we were on the 
ground, and it was in, you know, full guard, which is, you know, the best position for me to be on if I'm on my back. And uh, I think I got a little too, you know, comfortable being there and just focusing on, you know, neutralizing him, trying to pass my guard or anything like that, as opposed to, I, I wasn't going to win that fight doing that. Like, the way I was going to win that fight was I need to get it back on my feet and keep it there. That's my game. Everybody knows it. I'm trying to improve my grappling, and I definitely have since that fight. I've worked on it a ton. But mm-hmm. um, on, that, on that specific night, you know, I needed to have that urgency to get back to my feet. And uh, I kind of just played into what he wanted to do. And credit to him. Mm. So when it comes to that that fight, how do you plan on using that fight um, as inspiration to potentially fight him again, or use that um, as a catalyst to um, continue to advance and improve for your career um, uh, in the upcoming future? Uh, I mean, you know, I plan to use it especially because you know that first loss, you know, it sucks. Nobody likes losing. Uh, and it kind of just shows you the reality of your situation, you know, that anyone can be beat on any night, especially in MMA. Um, mm-hmm. and you're like, just because, you know, I feel like I'm personally a great striker, his wrestling was much better than mine, and that's what it came down to. So, I mean, you constantly got to be improving. So it definitely taught me that. But also a mentality thing of, uh, you know, you never want to be you know, too cocky to think that you can't get knocked out or anything like that. But as opposed to being so comfortable like I was and complacent and letting that happen, you know, I got to keep that killer mentality of I need to take this guy out. Like, that's what I'm here to do. I need to put him out. And that's kind of the way I've been looking at this fight is, you know, I'm just ready to give pure violence. That's what I mm, want. Pure violence. Is that what, so is that, is that what the title of this fight's going to be? Calm, that's what we're gonna call it now. Calm Robinson versus Tristan Scarborough. We're gonna call it pure violence. Is that is that what it's we're gonna do? It's definitely gonna be pure violence. That's what I'm coming with. I love it. I love it. I love it, man. Okay, okay. So, do you have a prediction for this fight? Do you have any predictions? What I just gave to you, definitely pure violence. Pure violence. I, the round, the result, other than me winning, none of that matters. Other mm. than I'm. I'm I'm coming in there to put on a show and give the fans what they want. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make sure to follow. Where can the people follow you on Instagram, Facebook? Um, I know you already gave out the information to the fight, but I want the people to hear it again if they have not heard it. Yeah, so my uh, Instagram handle is just Tristan Scarborough, just my name. And uh, same thing on Facebook is just Tristan Scarborough. I'll have the pay-per-view link, ticket links. Be sure to get your tickets. They're selling out quick. I don't want anybody to be without tickets to catch this show. Uh, and if you can't catch it in person, definitely you want to check out that paper. It's a great card. Lots of good fighters. Um, and, you know, I'm really excited to get back in there. Yes, sir. Will it be on YouTube? So for the people who can't see it, um, will it be potentially on your YouTube channel or anything like that? Uh, not that I know of. I mean, that that's more up to them. I'm not sure. Um. I hope so. That'd be cool. But I know it'll be on pay-per-view. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, we cannot wait to see that fight. Make sure to tune in. Thank you very much, Tristan, for your time, man. Good luck to your fight, May 15th. Thank you, my brother. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Have a blessed one. You too. You're listening to The Sports Cycle on 105.1 Live. Peace.